What's up, Taiwan? I'm Philip Broussard with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Three years on from a train derailment on Taiwan's east coastline that killed 49 people, families of the victims are still searching for justice. Reese Ayers has more. Blaring its horn to remember dozens of lives lost. A special memorial train passes through the site of one of Taiwan's deadliest transportation accidents. April 2nd marks the three-year anniversary of a train derailment that claimed 49 lives in 2021, when a packed Taroko Express service slammed into a construction vehicle that had slipped onto the tracks on the first day of Taiwan's National Tomb Sweeping Festival holiday, a tragedy that shook the nation. After the crash, questions quickly arose about how it could have happened. The resulting investigation found human negligence was the cause. The government railway agency, which was overseeing construction around the site of the accident, paid out over 5 million US dollars to victims' families. Eight people were also sentenced in relation to the crash, though some feel the sentences weren't harsh enough. Now, three years on, Transportation Minister Wang Guotai has visited the site of the accident to reflect on how the tragedy should lead to reform. One major change since the 2021 disaster saw the former Taiwan Railways Administration reformed as a state-run corporation. That change came into effect at the start of this year with a pledge for safer and more efficient services. For the families of the dead, however, fines, arrests and promises of reforms can only go so far to heal the wounds left by the tragedy. A deadly event, they argue, should never have been allowed to happen. Justin Wu and Rhys Ayres for Taiwan Plus. Experts in Taiwan are calling on the government to address energy inefficiency after the country raised its electricity prices. An energy policy group says that changing the habits of individual consumers can only go so far. They say enforcing efficiency standards for companies could lower industrial energy use by 20 to 30 percent. The group says the government should prioritize efficiency as much as it prioritizes green energy. Investigators have found traces of a fatal toxin at the Taipei restaurant caught in the middle of a deadly food poisoning scandal. John Van Trieste has the latest. A forensic lab may have cracked the mystery of the food poisoning case that's left two dead and dozens sick across Taiwan. Samples taken from the Taipei restaurant where all the victims ate have tested positive for a fatal toxin called boncrecic acid. Taipei Mayor Jiang Wan'an announced the findings in a press conference. Boncrecic acid can form on certain foods like noodles that aren't properly stored. But exactly what happened is still being investigated. As investigators work to figure out where the toxin came from, doctors are still trying to save several of the severely ill. A few will need drastic action to survive. One question that's followed this scandal does appear to have a final answer, though. The question of who is going to pay compensation. The branch of the restaurant chain where diners fell ill let its insurance lapse due to debts. This means the insurer for the food court where the restaurant is located will have to foot the bill. It could cost them up to 1.2 million U.S. dollars between the 31 sick and dead. But the restaurant chain as a whole won't get off completely. Its other Taipei locations, like this one, also let their insurance lapse. Taipei's mayor has promised a fine on the restaurant chain itself. 
这件事情会再重罚共一百万元。The financial fallout may be settling, but this case isn't closed. On top of questions about how so many got so sick and about survivors' chances for recovery, there are also questions about who, if anyone, is going to face criminal responsibility. Taiwan's unsettled public wants the answers. Joseph Wu and John Van Trieste in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. An independent bookstore in Hong Kong has been forced to shut its doors after battling intense political pressure. It's one of many stores that have had to close as the city imposes strict new security laws. Rosie Greninger reports. In a small nook in Hong Kong, hundreds of book lovers gather to say farewell to one of the city's last remaining independent bookstores, now closing due to intense government pressure. Last month, Mount Zero announced it would shut its doors after constant visits from authorities threatening jail time and fines. They said they received anonymous complaints accusing the store of illegally occupying government land. The offence: tiling a pavement in the front of the store and using its alleyway to hold book talks. There's been a crackdown on freedom since Beijing imposed a national security law in 2020, criminalizing acts seen to undermine China's central government. Just days ago, the scope of those offenses was widened and penalties were increased to a maximum of life in prison. The territory's officials have rejected allegations that the laws curtail freedoms of expression, but it's already diminished some civil liberties, including purges of politically sensitive books from public libraries. Forty other independent bookstores have also shut their doors since 2020. The handful of remaining independent stores where sensitive titles are available and liberal discussions are allowed say they're operating in an environment of increasing provocation. Several of them reported spikes in similar government inspections due to complaints about fire safety and labour regulations in December. In the face of these increasing pressures, some liberal-minded Hong Kongers have turned to selling books in wet markets or running mobile operations. It is the spirit. And that spirit is unvanquished. It's not, um, it, it does not di disappear. It does not become depressed because of all this. It actually, you look at how cheerful people are. You know, they, they are totally undaunted. In fact, the, the, the fact that they have survived this kind of oppressive uh, uh, behaviour is something to celebrate. For many here, the closure of Mount Zero is another hit on freedom of speech in Hong Kong. But the unwavering support in the store's last minutes is seen as a sign of hope that those who dream of a more liberal city are refusing to turn the page in the face of political pressure. James Lin and Rosie Greninger for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's National Palace Museum has brought in visual technology to give historical artifacts a modern twist. A new exhibition uses high-resolution images and 8K videos to reveal the details of the artifact's textures and qualities that are not visible to the naked eye. Organizers have also added interactive elements and sounds to create an immersive experience for visitors. 送风的声音,透过这个电脑的科技,让人家去看见这个看不见的声音,听不到的声音。那在肉形石方面呢,我们就让观众类似说拿着肉形石这样翻转啊,去看看肉形石的这个不同的层次。Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Finally, join us in welcoming this baby western lowland gorilla to the world. It was born last month in London Zoo. I'm Philip Broussard, take care, and we'll see you next time.